ever said to you, don't kiss your friends because it might ruin the friendship? That's what we're doing this week. Hi, welcome to another exciting episode of Rating Men I've Dated with Charles Burns. I'm your host, Charles Burns. This week we're talking about a time I had, it was like a 13, 15 year long friendship that we ruined because we decided to kiss each other. <laughs> I kissed my friend and I ruined a really good, like 15 year long friendship. So, boop a doop a doo. This week we've got the German friend. Da da da. Boom, boom, boom. A lot of my life revolves around Switzerland. I didn't choose this. I didn't really think about Switzerland until I went there, but I've spent years of my life in and around Switzerland. This guy lives in Switzerland, but he's German, and I met him when I lived in Switzerland. All right, we're going to rate the German friend on the next seven things, just like we rated all the other guys. We're going to be rating him on lover points. That's how good he was in bed. Romance points, handsomeness points, helpfulness points, stability points, faithfulness points, and finally ending points. That's how well it ended. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna rate the seriousness of this relationship as it was like a 13 year long friendship. <laughs> so it was, it was very significant to me and the fact that like we're not really friends anymore is very sad to me. Like I, I wish things had gone differently. This is how we met. I met, oh God, I met the German friend when I was so little. I was a baby, oh my God. I was still going by my dead name back then. That's how long ago it was. We met in Switzerland. I lived in Switzerland when I was like a teenager becoming a 20 year old. And he, he lived there too. He was like a year older than I was. And I had been living there for a while. So even though he was European, when he came, I was the one showing him around. And I remember looking at him and seeing his jawline and just being like, whoa, this guy is gorgeous. And then talking to him and realizing this guy is awkward. <laughs> he was very German. He was very, very German. I love Germans now. Now I've learned a lot about Germans. But back then, I didn't know much about Germans. And I just was biased against them because of, you know, World War II and things like that. <laughs> but we became really close friends. We're in the same friend group. And then about a year after knowing each other or something, he came to me in my room and he told me, like he did not even be like, hey, I have a crush on you or hey, could we go on a date? He came into my room and he just straight up told me he loved me, <laughs> which scared the shit out of me. And I started crying and ran away from him. And I didn't talk to him for like a month. I just remember, because he's like this beautiful German man just standing in front of me with just like killer jawbones. And he looks at me and he looks like he's about to cry. And he goes, well, because I love you. But then we became friends again. We, uh, you know, for most of our life, like we lived in different countries. I lived in America. He lived in Switzerland or Germany. But for years and years, for about four or five years, we would talk once a week for about an hour. And we just practice French, we just talk, we just, he was a consistent in my life when I had nothing else that was consistent. He was very kind to me. Then what happened was his family had a, a family tragedy. A member of his family died who was American. So him and his whole family had to come to Wisconsin to uh, attend the funeral and to deal with things. And so I came to Wisconsin to, to be there for him because I was one of their oldest friends. And I was like, well, I'll come just to see you because this is a big tragedy. I'm one of your oldest friends and you shouldn't be in America alone. You've never been in America. And I helped the family. You know, I wasn't super helpful, but like I did tell them how like rental cars in America work. And like I was just hung out with them like you do when people are sad. He was driving me back to where I was going to sleep that night. I was staying with friends of friends and he was driving me back there at the end of a long day where everyone had been sad. And we, we paused because he had to make a U-turn. So there's traffic going this way and there's traffic coming this way and we pause. And just right there when we pause, I just reach up and I, I kissed him like on the lips, like nothing, nothing else. I just kissed him on the lips. And, uh, and then things got really quiet. We were in Wisconsin and it was snowing. Where he was supposed to like be, drive me and drop me off at my house when he got there, instead of stopping, he just kept <laughs> driving. And then he pulled over and he was like, did you kiss me? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, well, can I kiss you now? And I was like, sure. And so then we made out for like an hour in the snow. Somebody called the cops on us and the cops knocked and we're like, what are you doing? And we had to show them our passports and be like, <laughs> it was really awkward. So then he, he left, he went back to, he lives in Switzerland. So he went back to Switzerland and uh, I planned a trip to go see him because I was like, this has potential. This is one of my closest friends who I already love. 
and we kissed, and it was really nice kissing. And so I went to go visit him and see if anything can come of this. And so I went to Switzerland to visit him, and uh, we went out to a bar, like this really cool old bar called the Vagabond in Freiburg. And we were sitting there, and I was like, hey, I think like this has a chance. I think like I love you. I think we should like just explore this. And <laughs> he was just like, no. He did not want it. And so I was like kind of upset because like, you know, I'd come to Switzerland just for a weekend and to be like, hey, I love you. And then he was like, no. And so I was like, okay. So then the next day we just hung out like friends, like normal. And then we ended up kissing. And so we kind of dated for like a weekend. We just like kissed and, and, and slept in the same bed and held each other's hands and like said nice things. And then I went back to America. And when I came back, it just got awkward. And we, we broke up like right when I got back long distance. So let's, anyways, that was the long, long story for how I met this dude, but let's get going. Let's rate the German friend. Let's start with lover points. I never went to bed with a German, and I'm pretty sure he's never been to bed with anybody, um, but he was very gentle and very kind and very tender, and his, his touches were very pleasing, and I enjoyed all aspects of them. So I will say, even though I never went to bed with him, I will give him 8.3 for lover points. This, this, this would be higher, but uh, he was more romantic when we were just friends. And I have several friends like this, where our friendships are romantic. And I have romantic friendships with women who are straight. I have romantic friendships with a lot of people. So I, it's not that big of a deal for me. But our relationship was more romantic before we started kissing. After we started kissing, I think it scared my German friend a little bit. So I would say that as far as romance goes, he's like a solid six. He's very romantic as a friend but less romantic as like a lover, if that makes sense. As far as handsomeness goes, like I said, he had those killer, killer jaw bones. He has, I'm pretty sure he has mental health issues. So I've seen him at times where it's hard for him to take care of himself. But even in those times, he's gorgeous. He just has, he's very nice to look at. He's a very handsome person. So I will say he's a solid 6.5 on handsomeness. Could be more if he chronically took care of himself, but for what he's got, he uses it well. <laughs> As far as helpfulness goes, again, I don't know what to do here. Because there have been times where I've been so depressed and I had no friends and my family was abusive and he emails me and calls me and is kind to me um, when I don't have any support at all. So there have been times where he was the most helpful person to me. And there have been other times where it's just so clear that he doesn't understand that men have a different life than women do. Like, there's, it's, it's weird. Um, but I will give him a um, 5.7 as far as helpfulness goes. So it's a little bit above average. For stability, we're just going to give him a 5. I don't know. You know, he has a family, but they're not very stable themselves. And, you know, he, everything he's made, he's kind of like made on his own. He's kind of like had to, to, to make his own life. And he doesn't have the same ideas or beliefs as his family. And so, all that being said, I still give him a five because he's trying hard to, to be a stable thing for himself, but it's still about average, I would say. As far as faithfulness goes, the German friend is not someone you should date. Like, I would not, I can't recommend dating him because he's not meant for dating. Like, you should either marry him or be his friend, but whatever you do with him, you should be very clear on what you're doing. And so I would just say he's probably one of the most faithful people I've ever met. Like when he says he's going to do something, he does it. And if he can't do it, he lets you know. Like I've tried to be his friend before and he's like, no, we can't be friends because I don't have time. And it's kind of mean, like it's a little like oh, abrasive, but it's also, <laughs> it's better to hear that than for someone to say like, no, we can be friends, but then they have no time. I'm going to give him a nine on faithfulness. He is probably the most faithful person I've ever met. And as far as ending goes, like I said, I went to Switzerland to visit him. We spent this romantic weekend, and then we got back. And I just remember we had, like, several calls, like, scheduled calls. And he got mad on all of them. <laughs> like, at one point, he yelled at me because I said that I missed him. <laughs> I can't have a, a potential lover yelling at me when I say I miss them. Saying you miss someone is a nice thing. And so some of it was translation. Some of it was culture. And some of it was just uh, my German friend had no experience in relationships, and I needed somebody who had a little bit of experience because I'm really fragile. So I will give the ending a, a 3.7. Would I recommend dating him? No, I would recommend marrying him. 
right? So, but all, yeah, I think you would only marry one person, so run, don't walk. We tally up all of the German friends' points. We've got lover, romance, handsome, helpful, stable, faithful, and ending. Boom, boom, boom. We get a total of 44.2. Forty-four point two. Thanks for watching this week's episode of Rating Men I've Dated with Charles Burns. Uh, this is our last episode. We'll do one more episode next week where we just go over the statistics and we talk about who won which category. And thank you so much for watching. Thanks for participating in this art project. Make sure you stay judgy and you keep dating. <laughs> See you soon. See you next week. <laughs> and it's not what I was expecting him to say. Like, I wasn't expecting him to be like, you know, I'm in love with you. I thought, like, if anything, he would be like, hey, did you have a crush on me? Because, like, I don't like that. And so I was like, no, no, I don't have a crush on you. So that's the story of our relationship. Let me just uh, rate him now. Let me rate this, this old friend of mine.